All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to clean out a carburetor commonly found on a two-stroke cycle engine. Carburetors typically look something like this and are found on your handheld outdoor power equipment, where it be a trimmer, chainsaw, uh, handheld blower, backpack blowers, pole saws. If you've got a two-stroke cycle handheld unit, your carburetor is gonna be some variation of this. Now, all two-cycle carburetors are not the same. Uh, depending on the brand of power equipment or whether it's an off-brand carburetor, uh, they're all gonna be set up a little bit different of where your throttle cable will hook in, where your ports may be. Some have a primer bulb and some don't. However, when it comes to cleaning the carburetor, they're all the same. Uh, they're two different areas that you need to focus on. And I'm gonna show you, if you've got a unit that's not starting because it's set up over winter or it's been uh, unused for a while and the fuel has clogged up your carburetor, this is how you can fix it. This is the number one issue that mechanics see on handheld power equipment. I've been working for a mechanic now for about 10 to 11 years. 80% of my repairs are dealing with cleaning carburetors. This is how you clean them. All right, we're gonna start with taking this thing apart. Whether you have a primer bulb or not, all of your carburetors found on a two-stroke engine are gonna have two separate sides that will need to come off. One's more important than the other, but both of them uh, need to be cleaned if your carburetor's not starting, and it's a very uh, easy way to take this apart. Let's start with this side. Almost all of your new carburetors now are going to be um, with a Phillips screwdriver is what you're gonna need. So we're gonna take these two screws out. And when we take this, these two screws out, uh, both sides there's gonna be gaskets that we're gonna have to be sure that we don't tear. Uh, now this is a brand new carburetor uh, that I'm gonna be putting on one uh, that needed uh, re repairing. Um, so I'm not really worried about my gaskets, but you gotta make sure your gaskets don't tear. If you remove this and you've got a lot of gasket that's around this area, your best bet at that point is to be to buy a new carburetor. Um, you can buy gasket kits um, and replace the gaskets, but what I found over years of doing this is you can buy a brand new carburetor with the correct gaskets already on it, ready to go uh, for just a few dollars more than you can buy a gasket kit. I hardly worry with gasket kits anymore. If my gaskets are bad uh, and I can't get the carburetor cleaned, um, with all the residue of the gaskets, then I go ahead and just buy a new carburetor. So once this piece comes off, you're gonna see um, this side right here. Now, if your engine is not starting, more than likely, this filter right here is a little met wire mesh filter. When you take this off, you're gonna see all kinds of clogged uh, fuel particles and residue in there. So the ethanol that's in fuel that we have these days that makes fuel cheaper uh, is absolutely detrimental to small engines. Um, ethanol is only good for so many days and then it begins to break down and gum up. Uh, that's the reason all your small engines running non-ethanol fuel is best. Uh, regular fuel will still do this, but a lot uh, slower than ethanol fuel. So you're gonna take some carb cleaner and you're going to spray this mesh liner here and remove all of the gummed up particles. Be careful not to spray so close that you actually push the mesh uh, wiring out. If you blow that mesh wiring out of this, it's very hard to get back in correctly. Um, I've done it two or three times um, over the course of 10 to, to 12 years of cleaning these carburetors and almost always I end up just buying a new carburetor than dealing with getting that push back in. A few times but I've been able to seat it back correctly, but be very careful not to push that mesh out. So back up a little bit. Every one of these holes you need to spray, with the exception for the screw holes, spray with carb cleaner. Uh, so in a two cycle carburetor, there's a lot of fuel moving in and out of the carburetor. There's small ports and that gasoline, if it sets up for any amount of time, will begin to break down in those ports. So take your carb cleaner, the little straw that comes out, uh, and put it down in each hole. Uh, make sure that you've got either glasses on or you keep your eyes closed, turn your head, uh, because some of these will uh, go in, turn on, and come right back out at you. Uh, so protect your eyes when you do this. But clean every one of these holes really good with the carb cleaner. Uh, and once you have that completed, then we can put this side back on. Uh, if you lift up the gaskets here on this end, 
again, being very careful. There is a small port right there. You might want to clean that out with carb cleaner as well. Uh, but just, you know, if you don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, which is what we use in the mechanic shop, um, then you can do this with just a bottle of carb cleaner, but you've got to make sure that you get every port. Um, if you're not familiar with carburetors and how they work, I would recommend cleaning one side at a time so that you don't mix up um, which side's supposed to go where, screws or whatever. Uh, I usually go ahead and clean the entire thing at once, but it's not a bad idea to do one side at a time. So once we get this side back on, then we'll go to the other side. So this is the side that's gonna have a lot of tiny parts in there. The first side that we just took apart is the one that's probably the most important. Um, if, you, if your uh, carburetor is allowing fuel to pass through and your engine's starting, it just won't allow you to go to full throttle. You can probably get away with just doing the other side, um, cleaning out that mesh wire screen and it's probably gonna allow enough fuel to go through that you'll be okay. Uh, this is the one that, um, you know, is usually secondary. I go ahead and if I'm cleaning a carburetor um, and clean both sides because I don't wanna take it off of a unit, clean one side, put it back on, realize it doesn't work, and then have to come back and do this whole process over. Um, so I go ahead and do both sides. Uh, but there are some small parts. So once you see this bulb, um, it's, again, it's different if you have bulbs or not. Um, if you do have a bulb on it, I go ahead and separate it as well. Anywhere there's a hole or a port, I'm putting carb cleaner to make sure that there's no fuel gummed up on the inside that's restricting my fuel flow. Um, so I'll blow some carb cleaner through that as well. Now this is the gasket you have to be most careful with. If this is a carburetor that's been on a unit for a while, this one's gonna tend to stick around these sides. If you rip this gasket, uh, cause it's working off of air pressure, this diaphragm, as you can see, my finger bounces back and forth. Um, if you rip this, uh, then that's the air pressure is not gonna work right. Okay, you might as well buy a new carburetor. If you press on this and it doesn't rebound like this one's doing, you can see it's brand new. So I press on it and it rebounds. If yours doesn't rebound, um, it's so brittle from the fuel over the years, then you're gonna have to buy a new one, uh, at least a new gasket and diaphragm. But again, it's just as cheap to buy a new one, uh, a whole new carburetor. Uh, it doesn't matter how well you clean it. If this is not rebounding correctly, um, then your piece isn't gonna work, okay? So that one's off. Now, here's where we get to all of the little pieces that are in here. All right, so with these little pieces, you can see there's a Phillips screw right there that's gotta come out. You're gonna have to have a smaller um, Phillips bit screwdriver in order to get this. So you can see it's a little bit smaller. So we're going to take this Phillips screw out. When I do that, you can see I go ahead and place my thumb on these other components. It's spring loaded. So if you don't have your thumb there, I'll show you a little better once I get the screw out, then this spring is gonna wanna kick out. And if you lose that spring, um, again, <laughs> cheaper to buy a new carburetor. Um, so I'm gonna be very careful as my thumb releases. And I'll show you all the different components. So you have a very tiny metal pin that's gonna run across the carburetor you have your needle valve that has a rubber tip on it. Okay, I'll lay that down here as well. Then you have this piece that holds it all in. And this is the little spring that you have to be careful. It'll bounce across the, you know, the shop, the building, wherever you're at, uh, and it'd be hard to find. So those four pieces, you have to be careful, and I'll show you how to put those back in as well. All right, so now that we have this open, um, this is the area where your fuel is controlled. So when your fuel comes in through this piece right here, it's gonna come in and that needle valve controls how much fuel is released and kind of goes through. Uh, if you're familiar with a four cycle carburetor, it's got a bulb, I mean, a, a float in there that's going to adjust. Uh, you don't have a float on a two cycle, but you still need to clean these ports out. So every one of these holes, you've got the one where your needle valve came out of. 
you've got this one back here, uh, that, and the other three are just screw holes, but all of these three right here, I would be sure that carb cleaner is sprayed in there. And now I know for a fact that on both sides, every single hole where fuel travels has been taken care of. And I don't have to, uh, to worry about fuel being my issue of being clogged up. Okay, so now we'll put this back together and I'll show you the steps to do that. All right, I tried to get this a little closer. I don't know if it will help much, but to show you. So the easiest way I've found of doing this over the years is getting all of my pieces ready to go in at, at once. So I'm going to set my carburetor as it's uh, sitting right now. I'm going to go ahead and take the spring and I'm going to sit the spring back in its little hole and let the spring sit upright like that on its own. Okay, so hard to maybe hard to see on the video. My springs right here at the end of the screwdriver is sitting vertical up. Now I'm going to go ahead and assemble these three pieces. So uh, I'm going to put the rod back through the holder. I'm going to go ahead and slip my needle valve back in its spot. And so now that I have this ready to go, I can bring it down. And my goal is to sit the needle valve down in its hole at the same time that I sit this other device down on the spring. So I just compress it all at once. And over the years, I've just become a little better at it than I was when I started. So all of that sitting back in the correct position now. And then this screw has to go back in before you let go because that's what holds everything in place from coming back out on you. So that's screwed back in. So once it's back in, if it's working properly, I should be able to come up and tap on this back end. And it is basically going to, as I push down on this end, it is going to lift that needle valve up where fuel could flow through. And then as I take my hand or screwdriver off, the spring is gonna push it back up. Okay, so if that's working properly, then I come back, make sure that I put this back on the exact same way that I took it off. Uh, and so as you're learning to take these apart, make sure that you pay attention to which ways are, you're taking all your gaskets off. This comes back now and sits on top. I said that and then I put it on wrong myself. All right, so once I have this back in place, then I drop all of these screws back down. Before you tighten one up all the way, make sure that you've kind of got them all in there. So we'll tighten these back down, make sure that they're good and snug so that that gasket can do its job. Um, once all of these are put back on, you should be able to hook all of your pieces back up. I typically, um, through the years of doing it, I'm not gonna clean a carburetor multiple times. I take my time the first time I take it apart. I'm very thorough. I go ahead and clean both sides uh, when I have it apart. I make sure that there's no fuel blockage uh, when I spray through all the holes. So when I have this completed and I go back and put it on my unit, if it doesn't work, um, then I'm gonna assume that the gaskets have lost some of their seal or they're not as flexible as they need to and I need to repair gaskets. And I'm gonna look up a gasket repair kit and if it's not just a tremendous amount cheaper than the carburetor, I'm just buying a whole new carburetor to install it. All right, well hopefully that provided some insight on how to clean a carburetor that you will find on your common two-stroke cycle engines. Regardless of the brand or variety, they're gonna be very similar uh, to the way that you clean this one out. So if you follow this video through the steps, you should be able uh, to clean out any of your two cycle uh, carburetors. Hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe to the channel. We love to cover uh, and give different tutorials on uh, things that we believe will be helpful.